Good morning. This is Steve, and I'm not speaking from the Seventh-day Adventist Church this morning. I'm speaking from my yard. And uh, I just wanted to show you something out here as we're going through all of this turmoil. The woods are starting to gump, turn green. The wild onion and garlic in my yard is growing beautifully. And I don't know if you can see it, but I've got daffodils springing up there. Spring is coming, folks. So uh, remember that as we uh, are going into lockdown here in, in uh, Illinois and as the entire world is going through this. So I'm going to talk to you from outside today, which means this is going to be short because it's nippy. I just want to tell you a story today, okay? When I was nine years old, my father lost his job. He was, if you could call it a job, he was teaching, he was actually principal of a small school out on the edge of the Navajo Reservation in New Mexico. And he wasn't getting paid enough to put bread on the table. Our Food came from donations that were sent to the school. Our clothes came from donations that were sent to the school. And then he lost his job. And we had, well, things were tough. So my dad, my dad, this is amazes me. My dad built a trailer out of odds and ends that he found around an axle from an old pickup. Uh, <laughs> I think back now and how in, how innovative he had to be to hold our family together. And then we left New Mexico and started driving out to California uh, with this make-do trailer being hauled behind our car. And at night they would take a, a canvas awning um, slam the car doors shut so that, that the awning would be trapped there and then put a stick up out, out to, to the side. And some nights my brother and I slept outside under the awning um, and some nights they made us sleep inside and it wasn't until years later I found out that my parents made the decision on where we were going to sleep based on their concerns about uh, whether there were bears or people in the area that would be a threat to us. They slept inside if it was going to rain and let us sleep outside. But if there were bears and people in the area, my mom and dad would sleep outside, okay? I mean, we looked like Okies from the Depression era because that's what we were, we were homeless. And my parents headed towards California, partly because they had family there but they weren't looking for a job. They were looking for a mission. Both of my parents grew up with extremely traumatic ch childhoods. Murder, incest, abuse, neglect, substance abuse, mental illness, violence. Sometimes I think the only traumatic uh, childhood experience they didn't have in their lives was war. And yet my brother and I knew nothing about that until we were in our late teens, until we were leaving home and our parents said, you need to know this about your past. They found a foundation for resilience to build their lives on. Part of that was that they both determined to thrive, not just survive. In every adverse ex uh, experience during their lives, they made a decision to look forward and not let their past define them. And they also chose to look up rather than down. And what do I mean by that? Okay, for my mom, it was Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Brown was a neighbor. 
my mom was often chased away from the supper table because she was blamed for things that were happening in the family. And Mrs. Brown always had her table open to my mom. My mom could go into her house and eat any time, day or night. My mom could go into her house and just play on her floor any time, day or night. She could help Mrs. Brown around the house. Mrs. Brown would take her to church and she would always introduce her as my girl. Mrs. Brown became an anchor and a mentor in my mom's life. Now, paradoxically, in my dad's life, it was also a Mrs. Brown who was his mentor. She was his eighth grade teacher, and she was the first person in his life who had told him that he had any potential whatsoever. She, she gave him affirmation on his schoolwork, but not just his schoolwork, his character, his personality. He wasn't the teacher's pet. She was really hard on him. And then one day she came to church and she said, Neil, I dreamed about you last night. I saw you in a publishing house in Africa doing a great work for the Lord. Now, this is for a little kid, an orphan, who's growing up on a homestead in Oregon and hardly has clothes to, to wear to school. But she created a vision for him. Now my mom and dad benefited from that mentoring that they received from people, but ultimately they've looked up to God. They found in God the father, the mother, the brother, the sister that they had never had. They found in God a person who would never abandon them, who did not judge them, who said, you are my child and no one is going to take you away. And that God gave their lives purpose. He was demanding. He asked them to be more than they found themselves to be, and yet he had confidence in them. And that purpose that he gave created meaning and that meaning was found in serving others. That was the family I grew up in. That was the God I was introduced to. Now it was rather confusing to me then when I found other Christians who found God scary or judgmental. A God who was more interested in how you behaved than in who you were. And that kind of shook me up as I was going through my adolescence. And to be honest, it was part of what led me into agnosticism and, and um, doubting that God was real. But finally, I decided, you know what? I don't care what other people think. I saw what this did in my parents' lives. I want this kind of God in mine. You know, right now, the entire world is going through trauma. And um, we like to think that resilience is something that's easy to achieve. Let me tell you, trauma, trauma in it, any of its forms is like a tsunami the size of a 10-foot, 10 10-story 10 building that comes crashing down on you. It does not lift you up. It grinds you down. And any of us who rise to the top, if we ever see daylight again after trauma strikes, we need to celebrate a miracle in our lives. Right now, the entire world is going through trauma. We here in America think it's traumatic that we're being asked to stay home. I have friends on my Facebook page who, who cannot get food. Because unlike here in America, where we have grocery stores to turn to, they only have a marketplace where each person brings a little food to, to barter and the marketplace is closed. They can't get food. The trauma that we're facing is very real. So how do we find resilience in this? I just want to point you to, to what I saw in my parents' lives. Determine to thrive, not just survive. 
Look forward, not backward. Above all, look up. We have to press together here, friends. We have to pull together to make it through here. We are determining today by the choices we make what kind of a heritage we are going to leave to the children of the next generation. There's a, there's a joke going around Facebook in the last 24 hours that uh, hospitals think they're overwhelmed now. They better get ready for the baby boom that's going to hit on Christmas. And all of those babies are going to, according to one of our local prophets here, J.B. Fletcher, all of those babies are going to be named Corona V or some such uh, uh, variation. What kind of a world are we going to leave for them? Be safe, be prudent, above all, look up, because spring is here, and this, this trauma that we're going through is going to pass away. What was left behind is up to us. Have a good day, and I'll see you around.